Hello there. I am Lena Washington, ABC 10's Sean Cunningham here for our King's Conversation. I'm getting programming Rachel Ray in my ear still, Joe. So hey, she's important, though. She is important, but <laughs> I uh, am getting a little distracted with the yummos and all that stuff. Uh, Yummo. We're, we're here to talk some Kings, of course, and boy, do we have a lot to talk about after oh boy. last night's, I'm going to say in a word, it was a collapse. To be nice. Um, that's your word? That's my word. That's how I would describe what happened last night. I it's would accurate. say it was a collapse and it was anticipated because I was out with friends watching it happen and I said, actually, to one of your friends named Jose, mm -hmm. I friend, said, Jose. you know, look at this lead they have 25 <laughs> points going into the fourth quarter, plenty of time. For this to evaporate, and you didn't, you didn't, you didn't turn off the channel. You didn't go away from it. No, I didn't, because I wanted to make sure that I know this team. Yeah. And boy, do I know this team. Yes, you do. Yeah, that so was collapse. A... Collapse is accurate, and I think there's many more an adjective I could come up with. Yes. But since we're radio friendly here and television friendly here, yes, it's the I'm daytime. Gonna, I'm going to call it demoralizing because I think they thought that that grueling stretch that they had, which I call the gauntlet around yeah. the All Star break, that that was all in the rear view. Because of the level of opposition that they placed, played with, uh, and you know, having the moments to win the game, and having all these, you know, hey, we've got the ball in our hands, we can win this game, it can oh, go yeah. either way, and they were on the downside of the of those games. They, mm -hmm. Those were losses, but at the same time, I thought they said, hey, we've got some smooth sailing. The schedule's going to open up, even though, yeah, the playoff race is is off in the distance. Mm -hmm. Even before last night, um, you finish it off, you cap it off. The crescendo is this: yeah. a twenty-eight, one of the most, the most demoralizing losses in the history of the Sacramento Kings in franchise wow. history. I mean, there's never been a, a game like this where you've given up not only just a 28-point lead that you had, not right. only a 28-point lead that you have that you gave away, but up by 25 in the fourth. Mm -hmm. And then watching a special performance by D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, is kudos unreal. to him. 27 yeah. points in that fourth quarter alone out of his career-high 44. Uh, great night for him, not so much for Kings and their fans. Uh, I believe it was one lead change and one tie, and that was in the final five seconds of regulation. Well, and think about this, too. D'Angelo Russell, a guy who is a first-time All-Star this year, and he, even then was like, he's a replacement. Even mm -hmm. then people were like, does he even deserve to be an All-Star contender? Yeah. Kings fans were like, yes, he does, because yeah. he's, he's, you know, made De'Aaron De De Fox eat his shorts in two games this season. Right. So, uh, But when you think about that, and you go down the history, the, the lineage of the Sacramento Kings, it's not a LeBron James, it's not a Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. it's not even a David Robinson bona fide all-stars, legends, Hall of Famers. No, it's D'Angelo Russell. Yeah. And it's the Brooklyn Nets. And most Kings fans probably can't even name another Brooklyn Net. Maybe if they watch the All-Star game, they know who won the three-point shooting <laughs> they should, contest. Yeah, Joe Harris. Uh, yeah, going up against Buddy Heald. But we want to know, how would you guys describe last night's two-point loss after a 28-point lead <laughs> to the Brooklyn Nets? Uh, I say collapse, anticipated, demoralizing. Give us your adjectives. Give us your words. Make sure they are friendly. Facebook friendly yeah. or at least uh, friendly enough for us to read on TV if you would like for us to read them uh, on, on the desk now. Uh, this is the first time uh, she, this, that Ron Parker has watched the news at, at this hour right hmm. on. Thanks hey, for watching. Ron, We're on going? every Wednesday at 3 talking some Kings, so if you're a basketball fan... Or even as the regular season comes to an end, we're not going to be talking so much about the Kings no, it's in mid-April. No, it's so. going to shift. I mean, you're going to have Warriors, you're going to playoff talk, and then for the Kings, even though they don't have a number one pick, uh, they don't have a first-round pick, I should say. They've got a, a plethora of second-round picks, yep. though. Yep. So, yeah, it'll, it'll, the focus will turn. The focus will turn, and now the focus turns to Dallas, of course. The Kings are back to work today after that demoralizing collapse that I anticipated. <laughs> Throwing it all in there for you. Uh, but they were back to work today, and we have some sound that we want to let you guys hear from practice this afternoon. Of course, we have all sound from Kings Home Games in practice on our ABC10 YouTube channel, of course, on the Kings playlist. But take a listen to what the Kings and their coach had to say this afternoon. Uh, well, yeah, it has to stick. Some, you know, it has, has to stick with you uh, as far as, you know, the, the teachable moments of, uh, you know, getting slow or, you know, checking out a little bit, uh, lack of focus. Um, but again, you know, you're talking about a lot of young minds, and, and it, it can come and go. And uh, we, once we let our guard down a little bit, they got aggressive. Uh, we shot a lot of jump shots, and we're careless with the basketball. And, and obviously, uh, you know, they ran downhill at us and got in the paint. And, um, so what are you what are you trying to do in those kinds of things? You know, you got to do a better job of getting back. Uh, I think you know the general theme is, well, gosh, can you just get a stop? Well, actually, if you just score, or you get to the foul line, you get in their paint. Um, you set your defense a little bit better. You you know you, you stop those runs uh, with with those kinds of things. And uh, you know the last two games, I think maybe that the, the Chicago thing 
carried it over a little bit because we made every shot against Chicago. And so you think, well, you know, just keep playing free and loose. Well, there's times where you got to really execute, and that stuff does matter. I mean, we just got to be aggressive. We have to keep being aggressive. Um, you know, we were aggressive throughout the first three quarters. And, um, you know, when they started scoring the fourth quarter, I think we kind of backed off a little bit and, 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 trade not, and, and played not to lose. So uh, just, just finishing that game aggressive. You know, if we, if, we, if we keep attacking and we're missing, you're fine with that. You're fine with the results. You know, sometimes the ball just doesn't go in. But uh, I think we kind of backed off of our aggression. You guys looked at film today. What was that one thing you kind of wanted to resonate with them? Uh, I mean, just the way that we played offensively. You know, they, I mean, they, they, they did score 45 points, but, um, you know, it was off of, you know, we had some turnovers, uh, some bad shots, and uh, I think that was just a lack of aggression. You know, we, taught, we shot a lot of jump shots in the fourth quarter, and, um, I mean, the reason that we had, you know, great, I mean, we had a great, you know, first three quarters is because they had to take the ball out of the net and not a rebound or a turnover. You know, it's not like, it's not like college where you'll play, you know, you'll play Tuesday. If you have a bad loss, you have to wait till Saturday to play. We, we lost a bad game yesterday. Um, we come back today, you get focused for the next game. So you, you just got to be able to throw that away. And, uh, I mean, I think that's what being a pro, that's what being a pro is. All right, so you just heard from Kings head coach uh, Dave Yeager and the face of the franchise, Darren Fox, that practiced earlier today. I want to quick give a shout-out to Ron again for watching. Uh, Neetish Singh says future. Uh, that's the word that they used or threw out there, uh, so that's positive. And then it's I don't know if this that is... was very positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this is a two-word, one word, but Angie Medina says fourth quarter giveaway. So maybe yeah. giveaway, giveaway game. And, and Angie's right. I mean, she saw it twice in the game in Brooklyn. Sacramento only scored nine points. Now, granted, they didn't have a twenty-eight point lead in that game, right? Uh, but it was eerily familiar. Mm -hmm. And uh, to see a guy like D'Angelo Russell just go off like that. Um, but I, I, there was a couple things that stood out, even from what the coach and the players said mm -hmm. there a minute ago, which is. Look, these guys are settling for jumpers. Mm -hmm. And they didn't put the onus so much on the defense. I know so much Kings fans talk on Twitter. They're hitting me up going, the Nets are running the same thing. Right. It's a pick and roll. D'Angelo Russell only goes one way. Yeah. How, are, how are they scoring on this? How are they keep doing this? How do they not change? How do they not? And he says, well, yeah, we settled for jumpers. It was like a snowball effect. We yeah. settled for jumpers. We didn't get to the free throw line. They lacked aggression. But I think the biggest thing that, that stood out to me was, because this is, and I hate using this, but it's true. They're still a young team. They mm -hmm. don't know how to... They, they got comfortable with the lead. Mm -hmm. They looked at 28 points. They saw on that other floor in the third quarter, and they watched the guy, Travion Graham. They saw Rondé Hollis Jefferson, mm -hmm. who ended up hitting the game winner. Yep. They saw them check in the game uh, right around the four minute, four or five minute mark of the third quarter. And I think they're thinking, oh, Kenny Atkinson's waving the white flag. This is yeah. over. Then Jared Dudley comes in, who all he does is set screens and hit threes. <laughs> Makes me think, I think I might have been able to be a basketball player. Yeah, well, Jared Dudley can do <laughs> yeah. it at um, this stage. But those guys play their whole rest of the game, and they're like, oh, we got this. Yeah. And then Jaeger subs those guys back in at, at the, once they cut the lead to 20. And I think some people were pretty surprised to see that. And as he yeah. said, no, they're, I know what's happening. They're making their, their run, and we need to respond. Mm -hmm. and they never did. And they were just shell-shocked. And I just right. think the more that snowballed, you see the turnover right before the Kings had – they call the timeout, and yeah. Kings are usually brilliant out of the timeouts. Kings usually run a very good play. That was an awful play, yeah. turnover, and it turns into that crazy spinning Rondé Hollis yep. Jefferson shot that yeah. ended up winning the game. It's a shame that uh, Kings fans have seen those two oh, game yeah. winners in that fashion in the last 10 days, I want to say, with the Celtics and now the Nets, two Eastern Conference playoff teams, but yeah. still... When you need to win those games and that's how it ends, I mean, that's, yeah. that's a gut punch. It was interesting talking to some of those guys because – you know, I wish I could have asked your, your your question, which is, give me the one word, demoralizing, what they would have said. Some of them would have used colorful language. Right. Um, but I, I think that what, what would have been interesting was, because everyone processed it differently. Mm -hmm. Some people, are, this is going to take a long time for them to get over. In fact, uh, Dave Yeager was asked, you know, what's the process like? How, how long does it take to shake something like this off and, yeah. and learn from it and be able to implement that again when you're playing another, with another big lead? And he says, oh, it could take months. Not that That's the great. not that the that it lingers for months, but months to incorporate that improvement, sure. incorporate that opportunity for improvement. Other guys are like, you know, no, we got to flush it, we got to move on. And right. luckily for the Kings, they're playing every other day, right. so it's good to get in a rhythm. And as De'Aaron Fox said at practice today, he was like, no, in college it's harder. College you play, and then you're not playing again for Saturday, so you got this long length of game days in between where it yeah. just dwells, and the hangover effect is that much longer. So yeah. Uh, we want to know, who do you give most of the blame to mm. for that loss? That's a question on our comments going on right now. So please weigh in on the comments on Facebook and YouTube. Let us know who you blame for that loss, the word you would use to describe that loss. And uh, I mean, who do you blame? Who, who do I blame? Oh, gosh. 
I don't know if it's one person no, to blame. Not. I think it's a collective lack of rebounding, poor decision making. I mean, it's kind of the overall theme that we've been seeing in these types of games where down to the final five minutes in regulation, the Kings look good, they, they look in control, and then things just start to fall apart. I don't know if it's the pressure of of being in that situation. I don't know if it's kind of like a PTSD kind of thing where it's happened so many times where they just get shell-shocked, like yeah. you said. And obviously, you don't want to think that because they are professionals, they're athletes, they know what they're doing. But to have that repeating over and over, that same theme, it's not like the game is gone in the second quarter like we saw last year. Right. It's gone in the, in the final two minutes of the game. Um, so I don't know if, who I would blame for that. Uh, is, I think it's all in all. Is, is anybody at the, yeah. at, the free, at the free throw line? <laughs> I would blame anybody at the free throw line who didn't hit their free throws last yeah, night. Yeah, I was a little, I, being in that building last night, I was a little shocked when uh, Golden One Center crowd reacted to the Nets hacking De'Aaron Fox, mm -hmm. putting him at the free throw line before the two-minute mark where you're still able to do it. And they looked at this, oh, this is a sure thing. They're idiots. What idiots? Why did they do this? They're like, oh, yeah, he's going to free throw line. It's like, yeah. no. No, that was a hack. They right. did this. This is part of the strategy. Even right. if it blows up in their face, they're stopping the clock. They've got the moment to react to it. He goes one of two. It broke out brilliantly for them. Yeah. Uh, and it ended up being a one-point game. Well, Olivia Campbell blames the Nets for the loss. <laughs> Those guys. <laughs> Those guys. That D'Angelo. Yeah, that's a, that's a good person to be the scapegoat. That, the, the, <laughs> that qualifies, certainly. Yeah. Certainly. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know a lot of people are going to look. This is not a good. This is not a good game for Coach Hager. I mean, I think that's that's easy. It's an easy culprit right there. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that they didn't switch, but the players look. Buddy Heald put it on them. Uh, he said, "Look, you got to blame the players on the floor. We're yeah. the one out there playing. Um, coach can say all he wants, make this all the subs he wants. Sometimes he gets a little criticized for being a little too loyal. Mm -hmm. But hey, you're still uh, what six games from 40 wins. You're in this conversation for the playoffs, and Dave Yeager and his staff." Are a huge reason for that. Right. So, while he can while he can get criticism for this game and maybe even some other games that you can nitpick here and there, I think that you know he's done far more good than bad. And they're in this conversation. They're yeah. to have to have a, a, the realistic option to be able to go for forty wins, which I think should be the goal um, going forward. I think is is a real feather in their cap. Yeah. So you think that's the goal, but do you think they will finish with forty wins? I think so because I mean, what do you got? Twelve left, eleven left. They got twelve left. I, if they beat Brooklyn last night, they would have finished with 40 wins. According to my trusty <laughs> Dusty, I like went That's full stayed. on. I, so I went, I went very detailed. So I'm looking at the schedule. See, this is where things were looking good. Remember in <laughs> October when I was saying, hey, this team's exciting. <laughs> Don't get too excited because playoffs are a long way away, but let's enjoy this moment. And then... The new year happens, mm -hmm. and then that streak, that's what really killed the Kings, I think, in this in the long, when you look at the 82-game schedule, it was this losing streak right here, mm -hmm. the losing streak they got in the All-Star break, and the losing streak they just came out of on the road trip. Those three points are what I'm going to look at at this season and say that's where the playoff hopes were dashed. And kind of like I said all year, which is, well, once we, once it became pretty evident that this team was better than you and I thought they were going Yeah, in, everybody. Yeah, um, I think what we saw was, oh, they've got characteristics of a 500 team. So just because they've hit this rough patch, they're, you know, a game below 500 right now. Two. Two games now, excuse yeah. me. Yes, two games below 500. Uh, I still think they've got the characteristics of that 500 team. I think if they go, you know, six and six, six and, or there's 11 games? 12 games. 12 games. So six and six. I think six wins gets you 40. And I think with the level of opposition that they're, they're facing, I think they can easily get that. Not easily, but I think that that's within it's the attainable. realm of possibility. It's very attainable. It's a goal that they should have. 40 wins, and oh my gosh, when's the last time you could say that? Kings right. Fans? 15 wins above what Vegas, ESPN, right. anybody who knows basketball and gets paid millions of dollars to talk about right. it, they not did us. not see 40 wins. <laughs> we don't get paid millions of dollars, but we definitely were in the below 30 wins Oh, range, absolutely. So. Yeah. What did I have, 24, 25? Some, something like that. Yeah. I had 27, which was the same as last year, mm -hmm. and they didn't really make, you know, from that team, we didn't see what could have been with this team, right? right? When Amon Shumpert was hurt. He comes into and energizes this team, and they come out hot. Um, Olivia Campbell has more to add. Beautiful. De'Aaron Fox spent time before the game and signed things for all the kids and literally made my son's years. The Kings are amazing. Can't blame them. So, Olivia Campbell, shout out to you and your son for getting some signed gear That's from De'Aaron Fox. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Don't sell that on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> hold, hold on to that. Yeah, keep it. Uh, you might have an all-star uh, signature on your hands in the next couple of years. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks are coming to town tomorrow. Luka Doncic, mm -hmm. Dirk Nowitzki. Marvin Bagley. Marvin Bagley. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's funny, too, because it's also Harrison Barnes' first time he right. faces his former team. The return of Justin Jackson, perhaps. That, too. I don't know if he, he He'll play. He'll yeah. play. He's in the rotation. 
Um, yeah, I think it'll be fun. I, you know, Dirk hasn't necessarily said he's going to hang it up or Which retire. Which is so interesting to me. It's like the Peyton Manning thing where everyone's like, oh, he's out the door. It's like, I haven't said anything yet, guys. Yes. Hi, guys. I'm still here. <laughs> I am still playing. <laughs> um, I think it's the Mavs and Mark Cuban. I mean, would, would they entertain him coming back for another year? Sure. Would they? I think so. I think it's interesting because if you're Dirk, you're looking at it and going, wow, I've got Luca, who's this budding star. Uh, we just got Porzingis, who's supposed to be healthy next year. Yeah. And he's looking around That's going, really oh, fun. we might be able to do something here. We've got some cap room, and yeah. let's go do it. Uh, I think it might be pie in the sky. I think they might have to tell him, no, Dirk, you got to go. You're done. You're, I mean, you can barely run up and down the floor, but you can still shoot. And he I can still, still think, do videos yeah. with Luca too, the, oh, the lip reading or yeah. whatever they do. Those are great. They, they just have to offer him, like, hey, you're a special assistant development ambassador for the Mavericks. Yeah. Maybe that's the role he takes. But I'm going to be really sad if it's his last time. I mean, this is going back. I mean, we've – Kings fans know, I mean, they had to go through the Mavericks every single year in those yeah. heydays, and Dirk Nowitzki was a part of it. And, yep. And you had the battles between him and Chris Webber, and uh, it was just those were incredible games, and to see him kind of still holding on, I want to see him go, and I hope this is the last time we see him. And I think I think Kings fans, I, I'm, I'm hoping there's a video. I really do. I hope they honor him in a way. They didn't do it for Dwayne. They kind of did it for Dwayne Wade. Kind of. Kind of. Um, but I hope they, especially since this is a Western Conference player maybe mm-hmm. they do something right. uh, i don't know that they're going to do that i haven't asked but i kind of hope that they do i asked harrison barnes today will you jersey swap with him just and he says no i'm not, uh, not about that too soon too not soon. about that <laughs> yeah um let us know if you guys are going to either of these final well last of four i think, I think I mean, games. it's funny because that, that's been the, the the theme all year everyone was talking about oh marvin bagley or luka Doncic. And, oh yeah and now you get to see him up close and in person i mean they look they had the game in dallas mm-hmm. but this is the first, it's so weird that dallas comes through sacramento for the first time this late, late in the season yeah um and I, I think it's i think there's some interesting storylines there and i think people want to see it even though it's like those guys are nothing like each other and they're both they, having separate great, great seasons, seasons yeah. as rookies mm-hmm. doing their own separate thing for their franchises in separate directions maybe the mavericks weren't really in a playoff conversation at yeah. all this season uh the kings have been right which is you know great for marvin <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to, to kind of hang over and Luke maybe is, lucas head and lucas the probably the rookie of the year yeah i think some people are starting to look at trey young a little bit and say he probably gets some noise but right and, of course, I mean, look, unfortunately, Bagley's had the injuries. Right. But he would have been in that conversation, I would think. But, no, what Luke has done has been outstanding, and he's been easily the best rookie out of this class for this year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then the Suns come here on Saturday. Not necessarily a gimme game because the Suns have been. Your Phoenix Suns. My Phoenix Suns. They've been looking like they don't want to get the, <laughs> an extra you, lottery pick. Does uh, I always forget how to say his name. Igor, does he, his coach is, yeah. Kukushkov. That's my I can't do it. I'm I'll not let you even say. Coach try. Igor, is he going to yeah. make it? Uh, I think he'll make it. I think he will. But only because there's been so much turmoil that I think they just need some stability in they the do. front office, yeah, they do. in the coaching staff, in the, you know, in the ranks. But, yeah, Devin Booker's coming to town. Kevin, uh, Kentucky, Kentucky guy. You know who else is coming to town? Ryan uh, Anderson. That's No, well, he's in Miami. Now. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. No, the other person coming to town will be Robert Sarver and his flip phone. Oh, yes. The Suns owner. Yeah, well, maybe we'll get to see him uh, sitting courtside with, with, his, flip with his flip phone. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the Suns took it to the Kings. Again, they blew, what was that lead in that game? Like 27 points in Phoenix when they Oof. when they lost that game. So not necessarily a gimme game against the Suns, but one of one, two, three, four home games left. The Suns are weird. Center. The Suns have been able to beat yes, Milwaukee they twice. They beat they, well, no, but they I mean, beat they, the Bucks and the Warriors in yeah. the same week. And they they have kind of a give a damn about them right now since the break. I mean, they actually haven't been playing terribly. They've been competitive. They've had games certainly where they've fallen off, but this could be a game that could give. I mean, catch the King, you're probably catching the Kings at right. the right time yeah. right now. I think the team you don't want to be right now is Dallas because when you play a team that suffers a catastrophic, demoralizing, whatever yep. colorful adjective you want, all the adjectives. They suffer. Then you see, oh, here, the, the get right game is the next game. Yeah. Well, maybe the Phoenix Suns catch the Kings again right at the right time on Saturday. Well, I don't know. Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. Tip off for both games set for seven. We will of course have post game reaction for you. And at thirty four and thirty six, I just want to say that the worst record the Kings could finish with is thirty four and forty eight. That would make them a playoff team in the in the East. <laughs> Even if they lost all their Even, and rest they of lost games. all twelve of their last games, they would be the seventh or eighth seed in the East. But they are not in the East. 
They're in the West, and they're likely not going to make the playoffs this no, year. They have a 0.1% chance. So you're saying there's a chance? Yes. Yes. So, um, yeah, we got a little clip of that. Tune in uh, to ABC 10 News at 5, and I'll have that whole breakdown for you. Playoff chances pretty much dashed now, but things were looking good earlier in the season. Let us know how you feel about the season, your word to describe that loss, how many wins you think the Kings will finish with, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you won't miss a post-game interview or any of our cool King stories. We'll be back here next Wednesday at 3 on Facebook Live, ABC 10 TV on Facebook and YouTube as well, L Washington TV on Twitter and Instagram, Sean Cunningham on Twitter and Instagram. We are your ABC 10 sports team. Tune in to Toyota Sports Extra on Sundays at 1135 if you want to see more of us. We'll see you back here next Wednesday for more King's Conversation.